Trump said, I want a vaccine in like, you know, four to eight weeks. That's what I want. Are you going to deliver it? He, he looked at the whole thing again. This is all recorded. So um, you can check this. And, and, and the, the big companies who, who know what they're talking about said that that's simply not possible. Yeah. And Trump got very, very angry. And then the CEO of, of Moderna, who was the mRNA, who'd never made a vaccine in his life. I can do it. Yeah. And Trump just said, right, open checkbook. This is my man. Give him a billion dollars, which he did. I just wrote a check for a billion dollars, said give him all the resources and don't let the FDA get in his way. And like three weeks <laughs> later they went into humans after I think they injected three mice. They studied them for five days, I think. Oh, they didn't fuck die. Off. I can't believe and this. And they went I... into human trials and, and, and you know, the rest is, is history. So that's how it happened. Thinking of the disinfecting. Point. Oh my god! Like I, I'm. So, the the problem is, this is this. How many people know this? Well, like, really, uh, the whole world should know because it was all broadcast. I mean, you can go it's all on there, and, and it? watch the meeting with Trump sight. and the CEOs of all the big vaccine companies with them all shaking their head, saying this isn't possible. And as I say, the CEO of Moderna, you know, going, I've got nothing to lose. I can deliver. And Trump going, fabulous. This is my man. You know, should be no doors shut for this guy. And we all at the time thought this is a joke. I mean, he's, he, he's you know, like like basically. Bluffing, you know, well, 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 he's just hoping to get a whole lot Land of money. Land on the moon. Um, <laughs> and, uh, you know, but surely this isn't serious in terms of this isn't going to be a vaccine in six months. Um, we were obviously wrong because it was a vaccine in six months. I, uh, I it's, But um, you now can see why the level of concern among vaccine experts, which I think, you know, if you, if you go, yeah. go on the media, you know, Rob Malone, who filed the first patent on mRNA vaccines, in fact, you know, again, very serious vaccine developer, Going, so he he's put got the brakes on, guys. <laughs> you know, so this I guy's... might have invented it, but uh, this is just this is a step too far. This is you know for me, this, this needs five or ten years more development. Um, you know, we've gone too far, too fast, and uh, we need to pull right back from this and and reassess what we're doing before we you know come a cropper. So. <laughs> So, but, like, you know, like, so, the, but a lot of people don't want to hear that in, in authority, including in Australia, the health department, simply do not want to hear that. Uh, because and, I, and, and so that's why the media have been told. I have plenty of people coming to me, oh, yeah, you know, you know, I was bedridden for a couple of days yeah. and then I was fine. And then oh, I just got a dead arm and, yeah. you know, yeah. just, you know, I've got headaches, you know, and I've yeah. also had a serious side where people are saying, well, all of a sudden now I get reflux, never had reflux in my life. And all of a sudden I can't sleep properly, never had a sleeping problem. And all of a sudden my lungs feel like they're caving in. And I personally know all these people. Yes. But as we as we all do. Yeah, yeah, as we no, all it's, do. It's, it's, it's for real. I mean, uh, and, and they are all being told they're psychosomatic and it's all in their head. That, that's... The, it, by the health that, that's department. That's what he got. That the, and the one in particular about his lungs. He's yeah. not old. Like he's he's in his mid fifties. He said literally from the time I've had my jab, I've had these effects. Yeah. And no, 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 it's not. You're getting old. Mm. And I, I, they're the sort of things that in my mind I sit there and go, fuck. And here we are. We want a mandate for everyone. After hearing that's what the testing is, I mean, how, how does how does the example get where the government sits there and goes, okay, how does an agreement take place between AstraZeneca, Pfizer, was it Medina, whatever? I keep getting that wrong. How, how does that how does that conversation take place with the government? Because are we have, do we have access to this agreement? No. So mo most the government have been asked. For a lot of the agreements, um, they've refused to provide them. Uh, I think on the basis of national security, um, and and also they claim they're commercial in confidence. 
So the government can spend, I think it's now $6.5 billion of Australian taxpayer money, and no one knows what's in those contracts. Are they reasonable contracts? Do they, you know, sign away Australia so that uh, to a big company? Because we know we've seen leaked contracts that Pfizer signed with other countries where they gave away their rights to sovereign assets, which means that Pfizer, if for whatever reason they don't pay Pfizer, Pfizer can take possession of like their parliament house or their government assets to sell them to to pay Pfizer's debt. Um, you know, so this would normally never happen. It, to, that's not a normal process? That is not a normal process for a government to give away its sovereign rights to its own existence to a, a major pharmaceutical company. That that would never happen. But we know it's happening and we suspect that it's in the Australian government's agreement with, the you know, certainly Pfizer, if it mimics what we've seen of the contracts Pfizer have with other countries, but the government are not making those agreements public, maybe because they're so frightened of what Australian public might say if similar wording is in those contracts. Oh, imagine if they gave up the MCG. Is that owned by the government? Oh, it's probably not. But anyway, so <laughs> give away Parliament House. I don't think anyone would care. You could give them the whole of Canberra for all I care. So if we um, sit and, and formulate that to, to uh, I heard, and this is the problem, it's hard to say, is, you know, normally with a vaccine, so you've, you're developing a vaccine, I'm assuming you take liability of that product. So you, you, into, mm. you, you come up with this, you, you've tested it somewhat, um, I'm assuming tested it extensively. It, there you go, and then and I'm and I'm not. It's not just you. There's yeah. also another pro like no Novavax. Yeah, yep. They've also must go through some yeah. stringent testing. Yeah. and then you you if if something happens or you start getting all these adverse effects, that I'm assuming the liability falls with you. Is that the case with what we're seeing with Pfizer or you know? AstraZeneca or whatnot. Like who's no, who's yeah. the no. who's a who's no. a who 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 does who can I have a go at if something's going wrong? So what we we do know is that um, in the case of those companies, Pfizer, Moderna, and AstraZeneca, um, that they refused to sign contracts unless the government gave them a complete waiver of all liability. So the Australian government takes all liability. If something goes wrong with the vaccine, those companies take no liability. We do know that, that, that although we haven't seen the contracts, we do know that that is in the contracts because companies, again, communicated that um, to their shareholders that they, they're not taking any liability over these vaccines. So is that why there's a feeling in Australia is that it's coming, it's being pushed back to business to make the decisions? Well, that would be we potentially one reason. So, you know, if a business mandates vaccines that then, you know, harm someone, um, that person obviously has a right to sue the business that mandated it um, for damages for that harm. So that could be, you know, millions or tens of millions of dollars if, if someone did have a serious side effect um, that that business will be liable for. And, and I, and, I believe that's the, what we're hearing now is what's going on on other eastern seaboard states, hence why SA has been a little bit gun shy. Well, look, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't I mean, I'm a vaccine developer. I don't ever want to see my vaccine mandated uh, in any shape or form. If you have a good vaccine, people will want it. Yeah. If you have a bad vaccine, it shouldn't be used. So there should be no role for a vaccine mandate ever. And I think most vaccine developers would agree with that. These mandates are not actually being driven by the people who make vaccines or develop vaccines. You know, this is a political agenda, these mandates. Um, and, and so, I, I, yeah, you shouldn't blame the vaccine developers for these things. These are not things that I, I think any of us encourage because, as I say, a good vaccine should speak for itself. So... The current three options we have in Australia at the moment, they have never created a vaccine before. That's right. So none of those three technologies have ever 
been used in an approved vaccine uh, prior to COVID. So none of, none of them have any prior, as I say, basis in terms of an approved human vaccine. 